Good evening. Good evening, teacher. We are going to wait for the others, or I don't know, because it's raining and I don't know if they have some troubles um, coming to this session. So we are just going to wait like a minute. And then we are going to start with the topic that we are going to develop today. That is the last day of this week, number two. And I am having troubles with the internet too. So. So we are going to start because of the time and we are going to talk about, um, it's kind of hard topic because it has a lot of information, um, but we are going to try to understand all the, the information that we have for this topic. So we are going to start sharing the screen because we need to read the objective for this session. So, let me see, like this. So here we have the objective for this topic that we are going to develop in this moment. And it says that we are going to talk about wishes and desires. And in this session, we are going to express a wishes in like, we are going to talk about wishes in two different um, situations. Because in some cases, we can uh, think that um, we are just going to talk about the things that we want to do maybe in the future, maybe in present, or things that we wanted to do in the past. But in this case, we are going to um, talk about the wishes. In the first type, uh, we are going to create sentences following some uh, rules, following some uh, structures. And in the second type is talking about the things that we want to do. And also we are going to talk about desires. There are things that we want to do because there are different things about wishes and desires. So the first thing is the objective. So it says expressing wishes and desires is a big part of communicating with friends. Learn how to express wishes that you have about your personal life career or health. This lesson from English teacher and we have Joy Sands is the one that is going to talk about the um, this topic in the platform. So in that case, you have to listen the audio and see the video uh, in which he is, is explaining the use of the verb to wish. But in that case, if you're going to um, listen and uh, the audio of the explanation later. So uh, it says that in the present tense and combine it with a past tense verb to express wishes. For example, I wish I didn't live with my parents. I wish I had a different job or I wish I were thinner. This lesson includes an oral language comprehension exercise, but the exercise is the last part of uh, this uh, session. So the, ex the exercise is just almost the end for this day. So we are going to see some examples. We are going to uh, understand what is um, the expression I wish, how can we use it, uh, we are going to work with an instructor and then we have 
eight examples in which we are going to transform that sentences into this new type of sentence in which we are going to express wish. Then we are going to talk about um, some other expressions like um, I wish, then we are going to talk about also uh, the desire, what is the difference between wish and desire. And also we are going to talk about one expression more that is um, in this case, uh, if only, but that is just to mention that expression. It is not like we are going to see all of the things that um, we can do with if only. We are going to focus on wishes and desires, but also we are going to have some information about if only. So we are going to begin with the explanation for this topic. And we are going to use another page like this because I have to work in this kind of pages. So the first thing we have here, which, and we are going to uh, understand what is this expression about. So we have, in this case, I wish, using the pronoun I, we can say that this expression is and in Spanish means ojalá, like that. But if you can translate the expression, you can say, but if I am saying I wish in, in Spanish is yo deseo, and that's correct too. When we are using which with the pronoun I, we can say that expression, ojalá. But when we are using which with the other pronouns, we have deseo o un gusto. So then we have just wish, and we can say that in Spanish, we can translate it into desear, o gustar. But in this case, in this kind of expressions, it, we don't have control over the actions. And also we can say that this expression means desearía or gustaría. So if you can see, we have many interpretation for this um, expression. And in this case, it is a verb. So when we are using I, we are going to say ojalá. Cuando estemos utilizando el pronombre yo, vamos a utilizar eh, más, se ade, lo vamos a adecuar mejor, ¿va? Y vamos a utilizar el ojalá. Si utilizamos los otros pronombres, he, she, it, we, you, they, podremos eh, traducir como un deseo o un gusto. Let me see. Ah, don't worry. You are just on time. Um, but in that case, we don't have a total control over the actions. And also we can translate it as desearía, gustaría. So that is the first thing that we are going to see with this topic. So. Then we have the structure. We need to keep this structure in mind. This is the structure that we are going to use for this kind of sentence. And we have the subject plus wish plus subject again. And then we are going to have, a. Um, in this case, we can say, and a situation that is not real. Not real. Why? Because we are uh, talking about something that we wish. And in that case, we have a 
real situation that we want to change or that we have an idea or we desire to change that action. Ese, eh, si se fijan en esa um, estructura, tenemos dos sujetos. Y la parte final de nuestra oración es una situación no real, una situación irreal, que es lo que nosotros quisiéramos que hubiese pasado en cambio de la situación que nos sucedió. So, in that case, why we have two subjects? Because I am the speaker in some cases. I am the uh, person that is talking and I want to change something else. But I, I will put this information into examples to make them easy to understand. So, we have um, some examples and I have the first one. We are going to work with these examples. So let's see, we have the number one and I have this situation. I didn't, I didn't study this topic at school. So that is the situation, right? The real situation. And it says that I didn't study that topic at a school. And I wish that situation is not the real one. Yo tengo esa oración. I didn't study this topic at a school. ¿Qué voy a hacer para transformarlo a un deseo, a un I wish? Es que yo quiero que esa situación no sea así y deseo que hubiera sido de otra manera. So, we are going to transform this sentence into a new one. So, I have this example. I have the first subject because we are going to follow the structure. What is the subject? I. I, then I need to add the verb, or in this case, the uh, main thing that we are talking in this moment. I wish, and I need to add the other subject. And who is the other subject? I, again, I wish I, and in this case, we have this one, this structure, is in what time or what tense? This is a past simple. This uh, sentence is using past simple or simple past. And in this case, I need to go um, to another uh, tense. Para cambiar, esto sí lo vamos a, a, a tener siempre bien en mente. Para cambiar una de estas oraciones, vamos a irnos a un tiempo atrás del de tiempo en el que estamos en nuestra oración. Un tiempo atrás. So, in this case, I need to change the uh, time or the tense for my uh, first sentence. So, I will change the simple past for a... Let me see. A uh, past, uh, in this case, I'm going to have the didn't, it is not the, uh, the word that I am using. I'm going to change for a hat. And study this topic. So I'm change the structure for that. So in that case, I have the simple past or past simple, then I have past perfect. I change to past perfect. So I have this one. So I have the, uh, the first thing. In the uh, first sentence, I didn't study this topic at a school is the real situation. The new situation is, I wish I had studied this topic. Yo deseo, ¿verdad? Ojalá hubiera estudiado este tema. 
it's something that we wish. So then we have the second example. We have the weather in this city is pretty cool. So I'm saying that the weather, it's cold. And maybe I don't like that situation and I wish something different. So in this case, what is the time of this sentence? I am using verb to be. So in this case, it's present, right? We are using present. I need to change that sentence and I need to change into simple past. I would change my first sentence into simple past. So again, who is the first subject that I need to use in this uh, sentence? I, because I am talking about the weather. So I am the first uh, subject. I then, we need to add wish. Then who is the other uh, subject? It's the weather because I'm talking about the weather. So this is the second subject. And then we are going to change the verb to be. Something uh, different in this kind of a structure is that we are not going to use was for the past. We are going to use where. And it said that we are going to do that because um, it's more formal. So if you are using was, is when we are um, using that kind of informal way to say the things. But in, the, in this case, if you want to write like a very formal way, you are going to use where. So in this case, we are going to use wearing. So cool. So we have here. And we have this in past or simple past. So, en estas dos estructuras, eh, vamos a remarcar, vamos a ir remarcando cada una. En la primera, nosotros estamos utilizando el pasado simple con el didn't. Esa es la estructura que me está demostrando a mí que yo estoy utilizando el pasado simple. Si yo tengo que cambiar o tengo que moverme a un tiempo atrás, voy a utilizar el pasado perfecto. Voy a cambiar el didn't por el had. ¿Verdad? Ese es el auxiliar que yo voy a estar utilizando, had. Y el verbo en pasado. Notice something important in this kind of structures. If you have a negative sentence with the real situation, you are going to change that negative part into a positive one in the I wish sentence. Si tenemos una oración negativa en la situación real, al convertirla al deseo, lo vamos a pasar a positivo. Si la situación está en positivo, en la situación real, lo vamos a pasar a negativo en la eh, oración I wish. So, otra cosa que les estaba diciendo. En el caso del pasado, del verbo to be, vamos a utilizar el where para todo porque eh, se considera que es mucho más formal a la hora de presentar este tipo de oraciones y que el was sí se puede utilizar, pero es una forma más informal de hacer estas oraciones con wish. So, we are going to see ex uh, the example number three. Number three. 
And we have this example and it says our best friend Our best friend won't go to class. So in this sentence, we are using future in a negative form. Future. So now we are going to use something to talk about future. And I think um, I will, or in this case, I'm going. Antes de explicar esta, este ejemplo, les voy a poner something here. Because we need to understand this kind of um, structures. So. We have the times, we have times, 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 times. I will do it like one, two, three, four, like this. So we have times and we have, the first one is the real situation and the second one is not is the um, situation that is not real so in the case that we have past simple or simple past we are going to change that time into a past perfect Now, if we have past perfect, we are going to have the to be in past. And also the past perfect again. Then if we have present simple, we are going to change that into past simple. Then if we have present perfect, we are going to change into past perfect. And then we have the to be that we are going to use as where. And then we have for future, this is the important part, for future. That we can uh, use this for uh, future actions and also like, we can say it like this, lo tenemos para futuro, para quejas, o para sugerencias. In that case, we are going to use will and cool. But in this case, this last one, we are going to use it with these two pronouns, I and we. So when we have a sentence that is using a um, future uh, structure, we are going to use the will and cool to form the I wish or we wish um, sentence. So in that case, um, we are going to have this example of the times because it's, it can be kind of confusing. So. Let's see, we have the uh, future in this example. Our best friend wanna go to class and we want to change that situation. 
So in this case, we are going to change that sentence. In this case, the first subject that we are going to write is, in this case, it's not I. In this case, is we, because we are talking about our best friend. So we wish who? Our best friend. And what is the thing that we want to change? We wish our best friend wool. Wool go to class. So in this case, when we are using this kind of, this kind of models, the verb is going to be in base form. En esta parte donde estamos utilizando los modales, no los modales que nos han enseñado en casa, sino los model verbs, in this case, or models, cuando utilicemos ese tipo de models, el verbo que va después, que es en este caso go, lo vamos a poner en forma base. No le vamos a cambiar nada, lo vamos a dejar en forma base. So this is the model that we are using for expressing something in future. So we have the other example, number four. And we have this example. My father hates when she does that. So in this case, we have for this one, there is a, esta es una queja, verdad? Esta oración es una queja. So, vamos a utilizar los modales que ya vimos para las quejas o las sugerencias. So, in this case, we have the subject. What is the subject for this um, sentence? In this case, the first subject is my father. Again, in this case, we are going to use the rules for the third person singular. We are going to change the structure of this verb and we are going to add ES at the end of the verb. So we are going to write wishes. My father wishes who? She. And we are going to use the model in negative form. My father wishes she wouldn't do that. So in that case, we have a negative form in the second one. Then we have number five. And it says, I don't have a big house. I don't have a big house. In this case, we are using the present symbol. I am using do not. So I need to change this into past. But in this case, we have two kind of um, sentences that we are going to create. One is to change the time of the sentence into past. And the other one is like, um, we are going, it's, it's like we are complaining. Es una queja. We are complaining about the situation in which we are in this moment. So we have two kind of structures that we are going to follow with this um, sentence. So. For the first one, we are just going to change the, uh, the time. So we can say, 
Then our first subject is I, because I am talking about my situation. I wish, who? I. I wish I had, because we are changing the time. I wish I had a big house. But in this case, it is not like something um, we are sure about. It's like we are thinking about the situation. So in that case, is correct to use this kind of example? Of course it is. But the best option for this one is to use the um the model. So we are going to create the second type of a sentence that we can use for this one. So in this case, again, I am the first subject. I wish who I, and in this case, I could, because I am using could with I and with. I wish I could have a big house. So we can use the uh, two kind of uh, sentences for this one, but both are correct. So that's just the, the, the form in which we can express that situation. So number six. We are going to see number six. And we have the example, why didn't I, why didn't I meet you before? Why didn't I meet you before? So in this case, we are using this auxiliary that is in, in simple past, but it's negative. And now we are going to transform that uh, structure. So in this case, why didn't I? So the subject for this sentence is I. I wish what? I. I wish I, and we are going to change to past perfect, this uh, sentence. I wish I had met you before. So in this case is past perfect. That's perfect. We have here the structure for the past perfect. Then we have number seven. And it says, Laura had never tried to speak English. So in this case, it's past perfect. Had never tried. This is the structure. And we have that is past Perfect. So we are going to transform this sentence and it says, let's see, who is the subject for this sentence? Laura, but in, this, in that case, we are going to change for the pronoun, she. She wishes, 
because we need to apply the rule. She wishes who? She. Again. And in this case, we have the structure. Had tried. So in this case, we are going to use again past perfect for this uh, structure to speak English. As perfect. And we have here the structure. And we have the uh, example number eight, that is the last one. And then we are going to um, read some information about the structure and some rules that we need to keep in mind when uh, writing this kind of sentence. And the last one is, you haven't been You haven't been practicing enough. So we have the structure haven't been practicing. So and in this case, we have present perfect progressive because we are using a verb that is using the ing form. But that is not the important part. We have the present perfect and that is the structure that we are going to use to change the structure for the next sentence. The progressive doesn't uh, have anything to do with the structure of the sentence. So it is not necessary to worry about the structure of the verb. So in, in that case, we have the uh, structure for the next uh, sentence that is the past perfect. So in this case, we have, let me see. In this one, that is present perfect progressive. And we have, let's see. Who is the first uh, subject for this sentence? I. I wish who? You. I wish you had been practicing, again with the ING. Practicing. And now, so this structure is past perfect. So it's kind of confusing create this kind of sentences because we need to uh, understand the different times that we have in English, uh, the different tenses, the different structures. But if we have that information, it will be kind of easy to create that sentence. So in that case that you are going to see, you need to know what is the structure, what is the time of the sentence. So then you have to move backwards to the other um, tense that you have. So, solo para hacer como un review, un little review de estas estructuras. Vamos a ver si lo hacemos más pequeño. Here. So, in this case, we have the structure. This structure is the one that we are going to use to create this kind of sentence. Esa es la estructura que vamos a seguir por lo general en este tipo de eh, oraciones. Tenemos dos sujetos en esa oración. ¿Por qué? Porque uno es el que habla o el que expresa el deseo 
Y el otro sujeto es a quién le deseamos eso. En el caso de que es algo que nosotros queremos, que nosotros deseamos, entonces siempre nos vamos a utilizar a nosotros. En el primero, I didn't study this topic at school. No estudié este tema o este, sí, este tema en la escuela. Y lo transformamos a I wish I had studied this topic. Deseo que yo hubiera o hubiese estudiado este tema. And the second one, the weather in this city is pretty cold. El clima en esta ciudad es bastante helado, ¿verdad? O frío. I wish the weather weren't so cold. Deseo que el clima no fuera o no fuese tan frío. So in that case, we need to understand what are the elements of the uh, the first sentence that is the real one the real situation tenemos que leer bien la oración verdad la donde pre se presenta la situación real y sacar los elementos más importantes cuáles son los elementos más importantes the subject of the sentence that is the one that is talking explaining something also we need to have the time of the sentence and then we can uh, transform that adding the verb wish so another thing that is very important that we can remember is if we have a negative sentence in the real situation we are going to change that into a positive one in the second sentence and in which we are using the verb wish. Si estamos utilizando el negativo en la primera oración de lo que sí es real, al transformarlo a la oración con el wish, o sea, una situación que no es real o conocida como irreal, lo vamos a transformar en positivo. Los tiempos no van para adelante a la hora de hacer los deseos, van hacia atrás. Si yo tengo presente, obviamente, si yo me muevo hacia atrás en el tiempo, voy a tener pasado y mi oración se va a transformar a pasado. So, in, it's that the main things that we need to know about this topic. But let's see uh, some kind of information that we need to know about wishes. But in this case, we are going to have this, um, like we are going to talk about if only, it's another expression that we are going to use to talk about uh, this kind of topics. So um, it says that if we use, but in this case, let me see the rules first. We have two rules for this kind of sentence. I'm going to write it like this, but I need my, this one. This one, here, rules. Number one, it says, when the original sentence, When the original sentence that we can call reality, is affirmative, you must change you must change it to the negative form. And vice versa. And the second one says, when the original sentence is in the present, it 
go back to the past. And if it is in the past, go to past perfect. And it says always one step back. So we have just two rules for this structure. When the original sentence is affirmative, they must change into negative. If the original sentence is in negative, you must change into positive. And the second one, when the original sentence is in present, go back to the past. And if it is in the past, go to past perfect. Always one step back. And we are going to write some example for that uh, rule. So we are going to divide it like this and we are going to make it kind of uh, easy to understand. So we have examples and we have reality. And we have the sentence, I am here, for example. That we are using the verb to be in present. Then the wish. We have, I wish I were not, because it is in past and negative here. So the first one is a short sentence. And the second one is a kind of long sentence. But we are adding the rules. Then we have another one, reality. And it says, I'm not rich. I am not rich. So we need to change the time and also the negative sentence into a positive one. Wish. I wish I were rich. Another one, reality. He smokes. He smokes and we are going to change that for the wish part. And it says, who is the subject in this um, sentence? And in this case, we are going to change the structure. We are going to use if only because we are going to make that a comparison between the structures. If only he didn't smoke. And the last one for this is the reality. And it says, it doesn't work. And we have the wish. It says, if only it worked. If only it worked. So that is the things that we need to know about the wishes. So then I have um, some examples, I mean, some exercises in which you are going to write the I wish. So I will... Um, yeah, because it, it's almost time. Um, 
I will write the exercises in, in this document because I have some exercises in English and I have a, another one studied in Spanish in which you need to write the correct form of that in Spanish sentence using wish. So I will write the sentences and I will, I will change the structure for this document in which you can write mm, or not. Man, the best thing is that I will write the sentences and you are going to uh, make the, uh, the structure, the, the new sentences. And then on a Monday, we are going to um, check that uh, sentences about uh, this exercise. Because there are, let me see, we have 14, 15 sentences in which you need to change the uh, structure. And then we have five, a sentences that you need to translate into English. So we have 20 uh, exercises, 20 uh, uh, sentences. So I will write it in this document, you will find it. Mm, I wish, I wish tomorrow. Yes, I will do it tomorrow and I will write the sentences in the document tomorrow so you will find it. And you can do it when you have time. Um, and on Monday, we are going to write the correct um, I wish sentence and the correct uh, translation for the, um, the last part because we are going to have five uh, sentences that you need to translate. But let me take this out. I need to stop this one. And I'm going to go to the platform because we have, as we said, in the, in the objective of this session that we have a, a oral language comprehension exercise. We are going to see what is this about. So let me go to the platform because it is, we have just five minutes. Let's see, is charging. So give me a second. Oh, I don't know if I I am the only that, that I, I can see the the conversation on the platform, but in this moment I cannot access to that um, that information. So I will show you because I don't know if it is just a problem that I have. That is this one in which it says that. This one is not available. But I don't know if you have troubles with this part. Um, and if you are having troubles with this one, uh, you can write on, on the group 
that you have problems with this, this part and uh, wait for a day to change that situation. But in this moment, I cannot access to that exercise. And I don't know if the sound is working too. I think it is not. Oh, yes, it is, it is, it is working. So let me see if we can hear the sound. So we are going uh, to hear the audio and then we are going to read the question just to have an idea about the answers that we are going to um, use for this exercise. So let's hear. Part A, listen and practice. So, are you still living with your parents, Terry? I'm afraid so. I wish I had my own apartment. Why? Don't you like living at home? It's okay, but my parents are always asking me to be home before midnight. I wish they'd stop worrying about me. Yeah, parents are like that. And they expect me to help around the house. I hate housework. I wish life weren't so difficult. So why don't you move out? Hey, I wish I could, but where else can I get free room and board? So I had the audio in which we have two uh, guys talking about some situations, but in this case, we have just two, um, two exercises that are with the uh, audio in which we have the first one that it says, what kind of wishes does Terry have? And we have three options. He wishes he could get a better job. He wishes he had his own apartment and that life wasn't so difficult. And he wishes he could move back within with his parents. But in this case, we know that is the second one because he is complaining about the situation that he is, that he is living with his parents because they are like to a strict and he wants to have a different kind of life and then it says what kind of wishes does brian have and it says i think they are kind of confusing in this moment right and then we have to rewrite the following sentences using wish and we have the first sentence laura doesn't have any free time and we need to rewrite the sentence to find the answer. Also, we have number four, rewrite the following sentence using wish, then can fit into his old genes. So in that case, we just need to find what is the best option for that um, sentences. And remembering the structure you can have this uh, exercise done. So let's see. Yeah, remember that I will write uh, the sentences uh, in the document, uh, the exercises. So you need to um, rewrite the sentences and also translate the uh, other five uh, sentences into English and then on Monday, we are going to check the answers. Now it's, to, it's time to end the session. Um, we are going to have the other session on Monday. So we are going to see each other on Monday and have a really amazing um, weekend. And see you on Monday. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. 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 Good